Okay, I didn't even know I was gonna get into this story today, but I was babysitting and I had a direct encounter with a demon. I got this Bible from prison. My microwave caught on fire the other day. It was like sparking. I was in a house fire as a kid. So if that happens, I'm not even gonna use it for a long time. Um, but let's try. How does it look like that? It's gonna freaking explode. <laughs> We're all clear, no fire. But it does concern me that it was a piece of food catching on fire. Now please tell me what food we're eating that's flammable. Oops. And then I have to pack this. This is my husband's wallet. So we see the tea is brewing here. Brewing, it's steeping. I'm on my way to school. I've already went to school today and I had a presentation um, for a class and now I'm going to school again because I'm gonna meet with my professor and figure out how I can improve. This is a travel water bottle. I just put some water in it. Um, it looks stupid right now. Why does it look like that? Okay, but look, it's still standing though. Metaphor for my life, like no matter what, I'm still standing. Oh, oh, no matter what, it fell and it's still standing. So, I do have something weird to say because you know, it would not be one of my videos if I didn't, but I've had this shoe for a long time and I don't, I don't pay money on shoes. Like I just, like you walk in them on the, on the poop, on the ground. Why would I want to pay a lot of money for that? My point in saying this though is I've never worn socks with them and like, I'm just sitting in my car with cars not on and I'm just all taking in all the elements. And the elements are suggesting that I need to get rid of these shoes because they I stink. Like you want to be a psychologist, but you stink? <laughs> Started raining, so. Done with my meeting. Went awesome. I'm so happy. I'm gonna go home and study my Bible. It's almost dinner time. Let's see what my husband's gonna make me. Let's see how he acts when no one's watching. Let's see if he's nice or not. Hello? What's up, beauty? Hey, baby. What's up? I love you. Baby, how, how amazing are you? Aww. You seem a little more amazing every day. <laughs> You're like... Drive is like something I've never seen ever with anyone before in the history. Like, I mean, this is it's like when I say it, like Michael Jordan, like that's because, like, I don't know anyone else is like that, and it's kind of like it, but it's just like you are just like on a whole different level of like go, like, thank you, thank you. I love how I love how I can call you and get like the big motivational speech. I freaking love this. This is great. This is why you're my husband. <laughs> I love you, baby. Did you want to say anything though? Or what were you talking about? Oh, uh, I, I wanted to test you with my YouTube subs and see how you act when no one's listening. Huh? <laughs> I'm filming you right now. So today I have a little story time that I want to share. I got this Bible off of the shelf. I might get emotional today just talking about this, but I got my Bible off the shelf. This is my old Bible. This is my first official Bible ever, so get excited for that. This is it. So I recently retired it a few months ago, um, and I'm actually going to bring it back every now and then whenever I'm feeling like I need to return to my first love. And so I got so many questions on Instagram when I used to like show this Bible on Instagram. Everyone would be like, where'd you get your Bible? Like they'd ask so many questions about it and I would never respond because one, I didn't even know like where you can buy it. But the real question was, do I tell the story of how? And I was like, wow, this is a redemptive story because I would tell people in person and then they'd be like, 
girl, why do you have that? But it's so true and it's so important to understand the story behind this. So I got this Bible from prison. So my stepdad um, gave this to me. He said he found the Lord whenever he was in prison. Um, but his version of the Lord, obviously, if you've watched my testimony video, it's a little bit different than who the Lord really is. He would tell me that if I praise Jesus, if I go to church, and um, if I pray to Jesus, then that's my ticket to hell right there to make sure I'm not doing that. He would tell me a lot of different things like God had spoken to him and God appeared to him in the bush. I guess he's like Moses part two. <laughs> but also, he thought he was Noah part two also. So he's like this mixture of like Noah and Moses. And he's like, yeah, God also told me I'm gonna be the last man standing on earth and I'm gonna be the man that rebuilds civilization somewhere in Virginia. Okay. Oh, I guess I'm in Virginia now. I might see him. <laughs> but he said that his family would probably be there with him. And he was like, and don't worry. God spoke to me about your salvation. You don't have to do much to achieve heaven. Uh, you've got that covered being my daughter now. God said that all my kids are making it to heaven no matter what. And so for me, I was like, oh, yes, I secured a spot. And while I do agree with the sentiment that you don't really have to do a lot to get into heaven because it's by grace through faith. Um, I do know that that was a little bit misleading because he doesn't know that. But anyway, um, yeah, so yeah, he gave me this Bible and he was like, you know, if you ever had questions, if you ever want to know anything at all, like just tell God to confirm it for you and he's going to do it because he's a God like that. He'll just do whatever you say. So he would be like, yeah, God works on your timing basically. And so I did start to kind of believe that because I was a kid, I was like 12, I was being severely abused, I was going through that whole thing, but I was also searching for purpose. So I'm like, you know, I know that God is real, I just don't know who God is. So that was always my question of like, who is God? Because I know he's out there, it even says in the book of Romans that we're given proof of God's existence just by design itself, in the world. You don't look at a building and think that there's no builder, like obviously there's a God. Um, but I always wondered who that would be, so I just didn't, didn't know. But I remember so many times that I would ask God for a sign or for him to just confirm something, and that would happen when I would look at my Bible. Now, uh, God knew my intentions back then. I think asking for a sign would be sufficient if you just read the Bible, because Jesus has given us all that we need just in his walk, walking of the earth and being a man with no sin. Just He is the ultimate sign. Him dying on the cross and raising again. There's so much evidence for the resurrection and so he's given us a sign already. Um, but I know that he knew my intentions as being a kid, a young kid that I was. I just needed that. And so he did meet me where I am no matter what it was. God was always there because he knew that I wasn't like the atheist that's like, oh, if you're real, you strike lightning right here. Like, no, God knew that I was really seeking him out. And it says in the book of Jeremiah, if you seek me with your whole heart, you will surely find me. And so he knew I was looking for him. And you know what? He was already looking for me. So it worked out great. But anyway, so he gave me this Bible and I always had it. And um, it, it, I started to really pursue him. This is the Bible where I found him. This is the Bible where he met me where I was that night and I got to know him for who he is. Where, you know, if you haven't watched my testimony, make sure you go do that so you understand what I'm saying. But wow, it's incredible. So anyway, I knew that my stepdad gave me this Bible. So I was like, you know what? One day I was going off to college and I left it in a garage. And I'm like, you know what? No, he gave me this. I don't need that. Like, that's cursed, right? So I'm like, that's cursed. I don't need that Bible. Like, no. And so I left it in this garage um, where my mom was living. It was an apartment garage. And um, I go to school. Um, I pursue life, but it's not very hot for God. It's more of a lukewarm kind of faith. And so uh, about two years after my lukewarm phase, I'm turning about 19 years old. And... I am in the garage because I'm moving dorms. And this was like one of the last things left on the floor of the garage. And I picked it back up and I said, you know what? Just because of that bad experience with my stepdad doesn't mean that I have to hate them. Why? It, he didn't, God didn't do that to me. God didn't abuse me. This has nothing, just because I got that from my stepdad doesn't mean anything. So I picked it back up. And right after I picked it back up, God knew timing. I was, okay, I didn't even know I was gonna get into this story today, but I was babysitting 
and I had a direct encounter with a demon as I was babysitting. Even the kid I was babysitting had the encounter too, like it wasn't just me. Um, and I was woken up out of my lukewarm. And it was funny how when I found the Bible again is when I was woken up out of my lukewarm phase. And I was just, I saw the light and I saw that I was, I was lukewarm and I needed to wake up. And I started to really, really pursue God after that. And things started to change in my life. And now, and then I started using this Bible and I restarted pursuing the Lord with this Bible. You know, he met me, Psalm 57, when I really encountered him. And now this Bible is like just notes and things all over it. Just like me and him, our intimate time together, me getting to know him. And people would sometimes maybe wonder like, why does she still have that? And you know why? Do you want to know why? Because that's the gospel. That is the redemptive power of Jesus Christ. That is the redeeming power of the gospel and you can't prove me otherwise. Look, we are broken down, wretched sinners and we're in desperate need of a savior. Look, we are just so broken, so messy, so sinful without him. And, and even though we don't deserve anything, we don't deserve it. We've broken every commandment. We've, we've wronged God over and over again. And, Every single time he pursues us, he makes us new. He sent his one and only son to die on our behalf because of the sole reason that he loves us. He doesn't need us. And he pursues us again and again, continually. That's the gospel. Look, if I didn't go through what I went through, I don't know if I would have ever pursued him. And that's a really scary thought to think about. But like the Lord knew that's what I needed. And that's where he met me. And he met me right where I was. And it wasn't that he was, it wasn't that I found him. He was already there. Like there was no finding. He was beside me the whole time, pursuing and loving and caring for me and just showing me his grace and his mercy. And you know, if it wasn't for those experiences, I don't know if I would have known him. I don't know if I would have ever gotten to know him for who he really is. And that's the point of the gospel. Look, we're broken and he meets us where, he, where we are with love and compassion. And he cares about us. He cares for us. He sent his son to die on our behalf. And when he went to die for us, that wasn't beautiful. It looked dark. It looked like there was no hope. It looked like there was no hope for tomorrow. And then it came out and Jesus did it with love. He knew, he knew what was to come. And that's why he did it because he knew the outcome would be the saving of our sins to set us free from the bondage of our sin and just to make us new. The Lord knew that. And that's why he did that because he knew that in the end we would be saved. And if it wasn't for that, if it wasn't for Jesus, then where would we be? We'd be nothing if it wasn't for that moment of him having to sacrifice his entire life and be killed and beaten and tortured and bruised and everything else and arrested and just put in chains. And it's like, if it wasn't for that, we would have never been able to have salvation. Now when God looks at us, he sees his son, Jesus. We're in the robes, the righteous robes. We're just, we're sons and daughters now. But if it wasn't for that dark time, the night that Jesus had to die, if it wasn't from that dark time in my life, who knows where we would be? That's the point of the gospel. It's redemption. That's why I keep this Bible. And that's why this Bible will forever rest on my shelf or in my hand reading it to remind me of the redeeming power of Jesus Christ and how good and gracious our Heavenly Father is and how much He pursues and loves us every step of the way. That's redemption.